Well, good morning, everybody. Victor Adair sitting in for Michael Campbell this morning on Money Talks. You know, it's uh, it's always fun and uh, certainly a little stressful when Michael calls me and asks me if I'd like to guest host the show so he can have a day off. Uh, it comes to my mind, it's like, what is it that we want to talk about? What kind of guests? Who can I get? And what are we going to talk about that's going to be not only interesting, but useful to our listeners? So that's where the stressful part comes in, I'm trying to trying to get the right folks on. So I think I've got a great show lined up for you today. Uh, just after our little intro here, we're going to have Robert Levy filling in for his dad. Michael Levy, come on, talk about the top three stories that, that the markets are really focused on right now. And then we're going to go to Tom Whitfield, and he's a realtor on Vancouver Island to talk about what's happening in the real estate market in the mid-area of Vancouver Island. Aussie will be on later, but we're going to have two sections or two segments today on the real estate market here in BC because, of course, it's so much in the news. We're going to talk to the experts, see what they see happening in, in their markets, both on Vancouver Island and Aussie, of course, of the broader area. Now, at the top of the hour, our special guest for the half-hour segment in Vancouver between 9 and 9.30, a longtime friend of mine, Dennis Gartman, is going to be on. Dennis writes a daily market letter. And believe me, this is read by over 10,000 professional traders all over the world. Dennis, of course, in years past, has been out here for Mike's uh, World Outlook Conference a few times. He talks every day about what's going on in the currency markets, commodity markets, crude oil, stocks, the impact of politics on the market, that sort of thing. And, of course, we're going to get a chance to hear what he has to say about what he thinks the American presidential election is going to do to the markets. Ozzy Jurek, as I mentioned, will be on. He's got an extended session this morning to talk about the taxes in particular and the implication uh, to the real estate markets in Greater Vancouver and the rest of the province. And then my son, Drew Zimmerman, will join me. We'll do a a duo uh, to wrap up the show to talk about the trading desk. You know, we're going to discuss what markets we're trading, what positions we've got on, and why, why we're doing that. You know, it just reminds me, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking with Mike on the show here about what I call the market psychology being a little fragile. I thought that the markets, uh, you know, were looking at the world as we know it and realizing that the risk of some dramatic change was probably a lot greater than what the dull price action we were having over the summer was, was telling us. Well, certainly, when we came into Labor Day here, we got off with a bang, and uh, we'll be talking more about that with Dennis Gartman, the volatility in the markets and, and, and what's ahead. Um, you know, uh, I think we should probably take a break right now, and then we'll come back with Mike Levy and get up uh, with Robert Levy and get into the meat of the show. I need to tell you that the Money Talks is brought to you by Solera Club, a royalty no fee investment. And for more information about that, you can go to soleraclub.com. So we'll be right back with Robert Levy after we take a break here. You're listening to Money Talks all across the Chorus Radio Network. Well, we're back here. I've got Robert Levy with me, and he's going to talk about the top three stories that the, the market's paying attention to this week. Rob, what do you want to start with? Well, you've got to start with, Victor. In, Can- in Canada, this week we got some numbers that Canadian household debt is now bigger than the size of our economy. Uh-huh. Well, uh, and the, the, the two sides of that, I guess, are not only how much we are uh, uh how deep we're getting into debt, but how much money we're making, whether or not we can service that debt. So far, that seems to be not a problem. That's exactly the case. And the numbers on their own, I mean, we get them every quarter from Stats Canada, and on their own, they are a little boring because they don't really mean much to the individual person. They're an average of the average Canadian. On average, a dollar and 68 cents in credit market debt for every dollar of disposable income. But you really nailed on the key point is we're continuing to grow our debt load. But in Canada, it's just we're not seeing incomes keep pace. We're, we're not seeing GDP growth keep pace with how we're racking on more and more debt. And that's going to become what, what really worries officials at the Bank of Canada. There's one in particular, Carolyn Wilkins, who's the deputy governor to Stephen Polos. She was talking about that this week. They just don't have in their forecast, you know, any upbeat for Canadian economic growth. And, and it could potentially potentially be a problem down the road because Canadians, they're growing the debt side of the equation, they're not growing their incomes. Well, you use that word problem and it calls to mind for me that uh, something Dennis Gartman said so many times over the years, it's not a problem until it's a problem and then it's really a problem. 
<laughs> and and that's always the way I look at it. I mean, I see two sides of a balance sheet. On the one side, you got the assets. The other side, you got the debt. And so long as you got balance, then you're fine. But if the asset side starts to fall for some reason, or in this case, income starts to fall, the debt doesn't, and then then you got a problem. Uh, what's your uh, second story? Hey, the second one, I think we got an update from the Ministry of Finance, BC Ministry of Finance this week on our provincial budget. And I think there's a need for some cautious optimism because on, on the whole, I mean, the numbers look pretty good. BC is in great shape. We're the only province that has the AAA credit rating from both Moody's and Standard and Poor's. And, you know, Mike DeYoung came out and said instead of $264 million surplus, BC is going to have a $1.9 billion surplus. But I think there's got to be a little cautious optimism around his numbers. Uh, and, uh, of course, these are always forecasts, and, um, you know, who knows what the future is going to hold. Uh, certainly, when you look at B.C., and I think we've had uh, people move to the province, and you know, there's been net immigration here, the economy seems to be strong, uh, but the, the question mark keeps coming back to the housing market. And, of course, uh, Robert, if you heard, we're going to do two segments on real estate uh, on today's show because this seems to be so important. You have to think that a lot of the guys that are and gals that are working out there paying taxes are in some way or other – working in the real estate business, and if that cools, then maybe some of that projected revenue they're going to get from the real estate, not just the tax on the, the foreign taxes. That's that's relatively small compared to the, the tax that they get from every time a house gets sold. I mean, that's a big number, right? Uh, you're exactly correct, and it's those, those property transfer taxes. That has now become, and it's projected to be, the, the B.C. government's biggest source of revenue. And when you think about it, I mean, what's fueling this province, and can it be sustainable? Because uh, income receipts from property transfer taxes is now the biggest source of revenue at $2.2 billion. That's what it's projected to be, and that's bigger than the $1.8 billion that the government receives from our five biggest resource sectors combined. So you've now got housing. I mean, some economists are predicting the housing market in B.C. makes up to 35 to 40 percent of the B.C. economy, and that just speaks to vulnerabilities. Wow. Actually, Robert, those numbers are worth repeating. I mean, uh, you sent me some notes here, and I looked at that, that the tax from home sales are estimated to be bigger than the combined revenues from the tax on mining, energy, forestry, crown land te- tenure, and natural gas. That's And you're saying it's roughly 35% of the economy. So obviously when we say, you know, is the housing market, and we all know it's been on a tear to the upside in terms of prices, if there is some vulnerability, that is going to have ramifications for the entire province and, and everybody that works in it and the, and the government as well. Um, let's go to your top story. The top story, uh, Victor, is just, you know, it's all this chatter going on in the market right now, 25 basis point hike. Is it September or December? You know, we got to get to the point of the markets, I think, have to get over it. Who cares about a quarter of a percent hike in interest rates? What's the mm-hmm. trend going to be? And, and as I, I've heard you talk about many times, and, and, you know, it's my view, too. I just don't think, you know, they might hike once, but they're not going much higher. Well, you know, we're going to have um, our governor of Bank of Canada, Stephen Polos, is scheduled to talk on Tuesday. And uh, the title of his speech, I believe, is Lower for Longer, if that doesn't tell you a lot. And, of course, this week ahead, I know we have the Federal Reserve is going to have their meeting, and it's the will they, won't they moment about will they raise interest rates by a quarter. And as you say, or Martin Mirenbeel likes to say, who cares about a quarter of a point? What, what difference is that going to make? But we also have the Bank of Japan out uh, scheduled to have their meeting this week. They went to negative interest rates here uh, a month or two back, uh, about two or three months back, pardon me. That seemed to backfire. So, you know, as we've talked on Money Talks so many times, the, the markets are so focused on central bank policy all around the world that uh, it, 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 it's almost comical. Or, again, Dennis Gartman would say, you know, it would be funny if it wasn't so sad. So w- what are you seeing then? Are you expecting no rate hike this week or who knows? I, I don't think we're seeing a rate hike from the Fed this week because the final governor who spoke before their lockup period when they can't talk to media anymore made it pretty clear that they're looking for more of an uptick in the U.S. economy. So it's going to go down the road, I think, to December, in my view. But hey, even if we go a quarter of a percent, and you know, there's the minute possibility, it'll be a shock, 
but then the markets are going to get over it because from there, I mean, the Fed doesn't have room to move rates that much higher, especially, as you said, the dynamics that are going on around the world. How much higher can they go in the U.S.? And I think that's the bigger picture. Well, I know we'll get into that with Dennis Gartman to some degree. We're going to talk about the currency markets. And one of the things that has made me sort of U.S. dollar bullish and not that the U.S. dollar is perfect, but, you know, it's just the, the prettiest currency in the ugly contest here is the fact that the uh, American economy seems to be relatively stronger. The interest rates are higher there, and that's that's a big function of, uh, of how currency traders price in the markets. Robert, listen, thanks for taking the time to visit with us this morning. And uh, you may be back next week, or is Michael still going to be on holiday? Do we know? You got me for two more. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, thanks for being here. We'll take a break here, and uh, a commercial break, that is, and come back. We're going to talk to Tom Whitfield, a real estate uh, – uh, uh, the new term is a realtor uh, from the uh, Mid-Island area, Qualicum Parksville, to get his uh, perceptions as to what's been happening to the market on the island and what the impact also of the changes in Greater Vancouver, the tax changes there, are having on these markets. You're listening to Money Talks all across the Chorus Radio Network. Well, welcome back. Victor Adair sitting in for Michael Campbell. And this section of the show is usually called the Big Fat Investment Idea. And usually it's our guest that has the Big Fat Investment Idea. But this time it's me who has the idea, but I want to go and get some confirmation from an expert. So my absolutely brilliant big fat investment idea was this. At least two or three times in the past couple of years that when I've hosted the show, I've said to Ozzy Jerick, I think people should be selling in greater Vancouver, moving to the island, moving to the Sunshine Coast, the Okanagan, whatever, you know, because the arbitrage was so incredible. And Ozzy agreed and saw that it was happening. I mean, Talk about being in the right place at the right time. If you bought a home in Greater Vancouver 10, 20, 30 years ago, you've hit the jackpot. While real estate prices in Vancouver were going through the roof, they were rising, but not nearly as fast in all these other places. It's a huge change in lifestyle and so on. But I've got Tom Whitfield on the line here. He's a realtor in Qualicum Beach at uh, Remax Realty. And he's here to tell us what's been happening in the market mid-island and what the impact of the changes in Greater Vancouver are. Tom, thanks very much for taking the time to visit with us this morning. Hi, Victor. Thanks for having me on your show. Now, Tom, uh, my sense is that over the past number of years, a lot of the people that moved to the mid-island here were coming from the prairies. And that's changed a bit recently. Is that right? Yeah, that's very true. Um, some years I may get uh, 50% of my buyers come from the prairie provinces. Uh, that's not the case uh, this year. Uh, the number of folks coming from the prairies is, is way down. But what's compensated for that is our numbers are way up uh, from the lower mainland people. And uh, sales on the island generally, and in the mid-island in particular, are up uh, over what they've been the past couple of years, and prices have been rising as well? Absolutely. We've had a huge sales year this year. Our volume is up about 40% over last year for this time. Uh, Single-family home prices are up just 15% uh, for this time uh, compared to last year. Um, compensating that, our inventory is down about 30% for this time as compared to last year. So we've had a tremendous sales year. Well, you've got a much smaller market in Mid-Island there, so that it stands to reason that I think the total population is less than 50,000 people in the sort of the, what we call the Mid-Island area. So uh, if the buyers are coming over and snapping up houses, your inventory would evaporate to some degree. Uh, the the, the well, How much cheaper? Let's do it that way. <laughs> Interrupt okay. How much cheaper does a house cost over here than it does uh, in Greater Vancouver? Okay, well, for instance, our average single family home uh, right now is about 465. Uh, so, you know, a waterfront, my gosh, you could get a walk on waterfront house here for one to two million. Um, so, what is happening is uh, people are escaping the traffic. Uh, I hear about uh, traffic in the lower mainland all the time. So, it's a lifestyle change. And, uh, hey, what a great thing if you could sell for 1.5 over there and Maybe buy over here for maybe five hundred, seven hundred. Pocket the difference, invest it. Um, that's the big win. Yeah, so it's really a, it's a twofold thing, isn't it? And I think you've told me when we've talked before that a lot of the people that are coming here are retired people, 
and some of the things uh, that that would maybe keep them tied to Vancouver are well you know the grandkids are back there or you know other family and uh, my friends and so on and but it's not that far to get back from the island and I should also say you know back from the Sunshine Coast because I know the same sort of thing is happening there and back from the Okanagan because people are going there but people getting out of the the busyness of Vancouver but also taking advantage of this huge rise that they've had in property prices to sell there and go and buy something in a, in a lower market and put the balance of the money in the bank. Tom, uh, your, uh, I should mention this here, your um, web address is tomwhitfield.ca. And as I mentioned, you work at uh, Remax in Qualicum Beach if people want to talk to you for more particular information. But so we've got uh, two minutes here. Tell okay. me what is happening in the market here outside of Greater Vancouver because of that uh, tax on foreigners that's happening in the Greater Vancouver area. Well, I like to call it the uh, the Great Pregnant Pause. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we uh, it was kind of maybe it was the third week in August uh, something happened, and uh, of course it was the fifteen percent foreign buyer tax, and uh, and so I think what we've got is uh, a number of folks. Um, kind of watching the situation over in the lower mainland uh... do they list Do they not can they sell their house over there or can't they um, so we've got a bit of a holding pattern going on uh... the stats for uh, june july and august uh... were pretty much identical for us over here in terms of sales volume um, and number of homes sold it'll be interesting to see what the stats are for the month of september i think september is really going to tell the story um, People, I think, are going to continue to come here, maybe not in as large a number as maybe what we've seen over the last little while, um, but it's all about lifestyle. Uh, you mentioned uh, the market here. It's almost 100% retirement, um, retirement and tourism. That's what drives our local economy here, and uh, the lifestyle is so, so very good here. And uh, so for those lucky few that, uh, you know, can sell there, escape, get over here, uh, it's a win. Um, what keeps people in the Lower Mainland is often family, friends, that kind of thing, but let's not forget we're only a, a two-hour ferry ride, a 25-minute plane ride, that kind of thing, and guess what? Those guys want to come here and visit you here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you buy a house, make sure you get a guest bedroom. Uh, there you go. Tom, then, so what you've seen is uh, prices have risen here uh, like they have risen in greater Vancouver, but we've kind of got a, as you call it, the great pregnant pause here, kind of a leveling off period right now. And uh, I know you're optimistic about the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, our, our single family home uh, sale prices are up by 15%. I mean, that's not a huge amount. Uh, for a number of years, we were kind of creeping along at three to four percent, um, and uh, I think people are are really uh, seeing the value. And uh, I don't see our prices spiking here at all. Um, actually, I don't see them going down either. Uh, but okay. it's, uh, Tom, Tom, I tell you what, I, I could hear they're going to start playing the music here. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us and giving us this news about the Mid Island real estate market. Uh, look forward to seeing you again over here. Folks, uh, we're going to be taking a break here and going to uh, we're going to be going to Dennis Gartman right off the top when we come back. You've been listening to Money Talks all across the Chorus Radio Network.